All right. Hope I'm coming in loud and clear here. Let me know if you can hear me good. Testing one, two, doing a test here to make sure I'm coming in loud and clear. I didn't mess with the gain at all or anything like that. It should be set fine. I just want to make sure that I'm coming in, that you can hear me okay. So let me know. Uh, Let's see. Waits for me a glad tomorrow Where gates of pearl swing open wide And when I pass this veil of sorrow I'll dwell upon the other side Some day beyond the reach of mortal kin Some day God only knows just where and when The wheels of mortal life shall all stand still. And I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Someday I'll hear the angels singing beyond the shadows of the tomb. And all the bells of heaven ringing while saints are singing home 
sweet home. Someday beyond the reach of mortal kin. Someday God only knows just where and when. The wheels of mortal life shall all stand still. And I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Someday my labors will be ended and all my wanderings will be o'er and all earth's broken ties be mended and I shall sigh and weep no more. Someday beyond the reach of mortal kin, someday God only knows just where and when the wheels of mortal life shall all stand still. And I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Someday the dark clouds will be rifted and all the night of gloom be past. And all life's burdens will be lifted. The day of rest shall come at last. Some day beyond the reach of mortal kin. Some day God only knows just where and when. The wheels of mortal life shall all stand still. And I shall go to dwell on Zion's hill. Amen. Good song. And I, I like that version. I like to hear. He sings kind of like Lester Roloff, and I enjoy Lester Roloff's music. Um, let's see if I can find... Here we go. You knew I've been in Corpus 35 years right now. And the Lord gave me this little song, and we'll just sort of sing it. Now the champion marched for 40 days, saying, give me a man to fight. The Israelites said, we got a brave heart, but our feet are sort of full of fright. Then a boy with a sling, a pocket full of rocks that knew how to trust and pray. Said, if you're going to run, Goliath, you might as well take off now because I came here to stay. Run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get her right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will. I came here to stay. Now the decree had been signed by the hand of the king. Daniel still prayed to the Lord. The hungry lions pacing the den. Here comes supper, one roared. And if you'd have been standing anywhere close, you'd have heard Brother Daniel say, if you're talking about me, forget it, boys, I came in here to stay. Run if you want to, run if you will, I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get her right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will, but I came Now, the boys wouldn't bow. 
The king got mad and said, Turn that old furnace up. High time up. Throw them on in. The Hebrew boys are going to fry. A little while later, he looked in the furnace. He heard Brother Shadrach say, Pull up a chair, boys, and warm your hands. We came in here to stay. Run if you want to, run if you will. But I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get it right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Fight and not a game. Run if you want to, run if you will. I want all the preachers to stand, every preacher. I've got a sermon, a stanza I wrote for you. <laughs> On the way to Dallas in the plain. Now the preachers wouldn't bow. The state got mad and said, Turn those rules up high. Time up. Put the pressure on them. Their freedom and liberty is going to die. A little while later, they looked in the churches. They heard God's prophets say, We may burn, but we'll never bend. Our God's just the same today. To run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. When I fall down, I'm going to get it right up. Didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. Fight another game. Run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. Amen. All right. And that needs to be the fight that's in all of us, whether we feel like it or not. Amen. Is the, is to not to run, but but to stay and to fight and to do the work of the Lord and, and do what God has called us to do, whether that's your family, whether that's... Um, whether that's your family, whether that's, you know, as a mother, as a husband, as a pastor, as a as a church member, or as, you know, a godly Christian that you're going to stay with the Word of God and you're not going to bend, you're not going to give in, you're not going to bow. And all of that is by the grace of God. All that is by the grace of God um, that we do all that. Uh and we need to remember that, that it's God's grace that lifts us up and holds us up, and that that's our strength. The Bible says to, uh, to take unto us the whole armor of God, but it says to be strong in the Lord first and in the power of his might. And that armor is tested. It's tested in the fire. And boy, is it. Let me tell you. Um, I've been saved for almost 18 years, and I pastored for about 12 years, and it's tested in the fire. And, uh, you know, the longer I've been saved, the more it's been tested. And, and as a pastor, the more it's been tested to stay faithful to the Word of God. All trials and tribulations that, that God puts us through and that the Lord sends us uh, to, to fight in. Uh, you know, he sticks us in the furnace and he cooks us because we need it. You know, um, you know, it's, it's something that we, that we have to do, that we, we've got to, God, we've got to go to the fire. We've got to be tried in the fire and, that's the fires of affliction. That's the furnace. That's the crucible to burn off the dross. Uh, you know, God lets Satan sift the wheat sometimes and, you know, many times in a Christian's life. Um, but pray for the pastors of America out there and, and all over the pastors all over the world. Uh, pray for those men of God. Pray for me because there are unique trials and tribulations that a pastor goes through that many of you will never understand on this side. And I say that not in any uplifting way to myself or anything like that. It's just the truth. Uh, that's who he attacks. 
Satan attacks the most. He attacks all of us, but he attacks them the most. Uh, he smites the shepherd so the sheep will scatter. And that's what he wants. So if he can get me discouraged or down or or anything like that, then he gets a victory. You know, he, he gets a victory in that. Um, because then other people aren't edified and encouraged as they should be. So we need to be in prayer one for another. And... Uh, you know, to make sure that we stay in the fight, amen, and we keep going. Don't take it for granted, uh, but uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. And that's the promise of God. Um, I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of deception. And, and I'll be honest with you, I would rather have God's affliction on me, God's rod of affliction on me, that I've had on me in, in different ways. I'd rather have the thorn that God gives me. I would rather have that than, than have sin. I'd rather have that than, than the, the moral failures uh, that we're seeing all around us today in, in pastors and in churches and everything else. And I'm not exalting myself. I, I'm saying, I, I, listen, I've always prayed against those things because I know they're real. I know that those unique challenges and those the office of a bishop they said that they they put you in a place of of a, as a target so we have to pray against that those things and i have for a long time in my ministry i've prayed against uh many things like that that the lord would protect me from those things and keep me uh through all seasons and uh, and to be faithful to him in all seasons so you continue to pray for us as we as we do that as we uh, serve the Lord in in, in truth. Uh, thank you to those that sent gifts in and that wished us happy birthday, wish me happy birthday and all that. Thank you for that, and thank you for the gifts that you sent and um, all those things. Praise the Lord for that. We thank God for those things. Um, and thank God for you that you're out there and that we can minister to you and that it's a blessing to you that, that, that uh, you know, that you're helped through all those things, uh, through the ministry and through the different um, you know that that uh, through all all seasons, amen, through everything. Uh, and that's what we have to do. Well, listen, it's kind of crazy out there with this charismatic this charismatic nonsense that's going on here. Um, I'm you know, we're continuing this series on Pentecostal heresies. I, I've tried to kind of mix it up for you today or this week a little bit. Um, hi, Becca. Hope you're doing well. No rabid chipmunks chasing you or anything like that. Um, you know, I've tried to kind of mix it up for you, do do a few different things and, and all that. Um, you know, Monday... Uh, we dealt with a few things, and I forgot what they are now because I can't think straight right now for some reason. But let me look and see. Let me. Oh, I know what it was. It was. Um, um, no, I don't. Let's see. Oh. Let me see what it was. I don't remember. My goodness gracious, I can't remember. Oh, that's right. How could I forget that one? That's the one that made everybody mad. Post trib proofs. So we talked about some of those things, and I uh, talked about. All that. And then yesterday we dealt with the Sabbath issue. And we talked about the Sabbath day. Uh, or the, the Sabbath keepers, I mean. And the Hebrew Roots movement. And boy, that made a lot of friends and influenced a lot of people. Uh, wait till they catch up to it. They all catch up to it. They haven't got to it yet, but. Sometimes they're they're like the SDA people or the Orthodox people. They take a while to get to it, but once they get to it, man, they'll they'll harp on that thing forever. I'll be getting comments on that for years to come. But it's important that people understand the issue of the Sabbath. It's very important that they understand that it's not for the the Lord's churches today. That was given to the Jews. Um, you know, and now we're back today to the Charismania. Uh, the Pentecostal heresies. We're going to talk about slain in the spirit and spiritual drunkenness.
and the spiritual drunkenness. Now we're we're we've been reviewing and using this book, um, by David Cloud, and I'll kind of let me switch the shot here. See where I'm at here. This is the book, and I recommend buying it. Um, I know that guy looks like Steven Anderson on the cover, but that's not him. I know a lot of people that like to smack him in the forehead, but that is not Steven Anderson. All right? Anyway, that was a joke. Insert laugh here. Um, anyway, but that I recommend that book. I think it's a good resource to have. By the way, if you don't have it, I also recommend The Way of Life Encyclopedia at wayoflife.org. You can download, you can buy, purchase the um, the digital download of it. It's very cheap. It's like 10 bucks. Or you can buy the book for like 30 I think it is. Either price is well worth it. The man, the man is a, a good man, and he understands a lot of things. That Way of Life Encyclopedia is a very wide book, and it's double-columned. So, so much information there. So, understand this, like a double-column book like that. If it's like 800 pages, if it's like 800 pages, then it's like 1,600 pages actually because it's double column like that. So you can fit a lot of things on there. Uh, anyway, so um, keep that in mind, and I would I would highly recommend. I would highly recommend. You know that you get that book, uh, Cindy. They updated that book. Since then, I would buy a new copy or download the newest one from the 90s because he's updated that and added a ton of stuff to that since the 90s. A ton of stuff. So, um, you know, it'd be a good idea for you to get another one of those. Yeah, we'll talk about that crazy nut probably some way down the road, that John Crowder. Um Yes, it is an excellent resource, and I recommend it. So, uh, and just like I recommend this book, I think it's a very good read. I mean, most of this, I mean, he comments on it, but most of it is honestly um, all of the facts that you need gathered together in one resource. That's what the Way of Life Encyclopedia is like. So, and I don't get any money. I mean, I don't, I don't have some Amazon account where I'm making money off everything that goes there or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just telling you that it's a good resource. And I, I recommend having either one of those. Um, definitely. So anyway, wow, lots of stuff to cover today, though. Lots of stuff to cover. Really crazy. The Pentecostal movement, the charismatic movement. Um, it's It's very... Sad. And the first video, before I even get into slain in the spirit, um, I learned something from Pastor Hoggard about that in watching his recent video, which, by the way, I do recommend his recent video um, on the Phoenix and aliens. It's his newest Watchmen video broadcast. I recommend watching that. I'm not all the way through it. I'm going to run on the elliptical again for another 40 minutes tonight, and I'll probably finish it. You know, um, but if you if you watch if you watch that video, you're going to learn something about being slain in the spirit. That that's the Masonic order is what they do. But also, there was this lady that claimed to be a born again Christian in the video, and he's. Pastor Hoggard knows full full well that she's not. But she claimed to be a born-again Christian. And what did they do? She was abducted by aliens, she said, which we believe are devils. Okay? Um, so don't leave this broadcast and say, Oh, Pastor Cooley believes in aliens and green Martians and, and all this. No, I believe... They're devils. I believe they are straight up devils. 
and they manifest in different ways because the Bible shows us that there's different be heavenly beasts in heaven and there was different uses for those angels and all those things. So um, it's very, very, very interesting. But it kind of goes along with this that I'm teaching you today here on this being slain in the spirit because that alien touched that orb that went on that lady touched her in, in, in her pineal gland, her third eye. And I've talked about the third eye before. Ooh, I should have got my notes on that. Um, but I've talked about the third eye before and the pineal gland. You can go back and listen uh, to some of those teachings. I wish I would have had that with. I never thought about that today. Maybe I could find my notes on here, though. Um, but anyway... The third eye, that's that's the same thing as them being slain in the spirit. And I I really it's interesting to me that like he said, like Pastor Hoggard said, that that alien conspiracy is going to be used, and the charismatics and all these people, they're going to give into it, man. I'm telling you, the Mormons, they already believe they're from the stinking planet Kolob. They already believe in aliens. They already believe in that weird stuff. They got the pyramids. They got the Masonic Order. They got, all, I mean, the, Hiram Abiff being slain in the spirit, all those things that happened, all of that. Uh, he talks about JFK and how JFK was shot in the wrist and the forehead and in the side or whatever or something like that. Uh, I mean, all that kind of stuff. So it's it really is quite interesting. Uh, and it really is coming full circle. You know, it's coming full circle. Uh, and the demonic deception is rising, and, and we're going to see it worse. Um, let me show you the thing that bothers me. Now, it all bothers me because it's satanic. But what bothers me is this. I'll show you this. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord. Come here, Tater Man. And lift your hands. The Lord, I ask you to bless her. I hear you, son. Come on up here. Lord, I ask you to touch them, Jesus. Bless Peyton, Jesus. Bless him. Hey, it don't come on. It don't matter if they that high or that high. Holy Ghost, touch Peyton. Use him. Come on, lift your hands to him, Peyton. Lift your hands to him, son. Come on. Holy Ghost. Say, Jesus, use me. Use him, Lord. Show yourself to him. You want Jesus? A little bit of satanic uh, indigestion there. Sorry that that. Uh, did you catch that satanic in, indigestion? Let me let me let me play that for you again. Show yourself to him. You want Jesus use your lips? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me back it up a little bit. Use me. Did you hear that? That's that's like hell belching is what that is. That's like a devil inside them, burping. It's kind of like taking a big swig of something carbonated from the spirit world of hell and bat use him Lord show yourself to him you want Jesus use your lips come on lift your hands to hallelujah say Jesus use me hallelujah he loves you legs hallelujah he's gonna use you baby girl <laughs> see see how they how they how they can manipulate those girls they can they 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 can manipulate a girl's emotions easier than that boy. See, that boy wasn't buying it right away, okay? But that girl, because that's how, how did the serpent seduce Eve in that sense? How, it was the subtlety. The subtlety, and look how he's doing it. Same thing with the woman. I'm going to show you another example. The same thing with this little girl. Appealing, appealing to her being used, appealing to her intellect, appealing to that, appealing to her feelings and emotions. Not her intellect, but her feelings and emotions. Hallelujah. He's going to use you, baby girl. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Lord. Touch your Lord in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give him glory. Oh, my goodness gracious. These people make me mad enough to spit nails. I, I, it just, it ticks me off. That just makes me mad. That thing right there, what he just did, just, it just really grates on me. <sighs> really, I, I, I hate it. It makes me angry. It, it does make me angry. I'm going to show you another example of this. Um, I mean, that weird music and that chant. Did you hear like the chant? Listen, listen to this part. Listen to the this. Touch your Lord in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give Him glory, church. Look, look at this picture on the pulpit. So you got the long-haired hippie Caesar Borgio, right? And 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 then and you've got look at look at this. Look at this. Telling you, these people are stinking demons, man. They have devils in them the size of Texas. It's just, it's, it, it's the way and the manipulation of the music. It reminds me of Kanye West. I know. I'm just a big mean guy because I'm not jumping on the Kanye train. I won't jump on the Kanye train because I think it's demonic. I think there's something up with that man. And I ain't jumping on the Kanye train, man. Okay. So you see that. Now I want you to see this, because you're going to notice a pattern. Yes, what's going on here? What do you think? Talk to me. Well, I brought my family. You what? I brought my family. Okay. Earlier you said L5, L5, L5 uh -huh. and arthritic hips. Right. My wife's got some digestive issues and some muscle pain, and my son would like to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Wow. Now, what you're going to see is this kid don't know what being filled with the Spirit means no more than he understands, no more than he would understand how to bake a, how to bake a cake on his own or... or how to drive a vehicle or something exciting that he'd want to do, but he doesn't know anything about it. I mean, watch how this boy acts and I can't believe these people put this video on here because it shows how full of beans they are. By the way, the other thing you're going to notice is the spirit of Jezebel here. Cause then this lady, all she does all of the talking, all of it. And he shuts up and says nothing. And she's just like blabbing around. And this kid, he just wants to go get a pizza or something. He doesn't know what's up. He's just a boy. What a night. See, now she's got to hold him back and get him to act right because, you know. He wants to be filled with the Spirit. Who believes that this kid? But you know what? There's hope for this kid. And I'm gonna, you're going to see why in a little bit here. But um, you're gonna, this is a big show. And all we brought was our faith. All you brought was your faith. Where are you from, the three of you? We're from Fredericksburg, Texas. Fredericksburg, I don't know. Where's that at? I'm around Austin. Around it's Austin. around Austin. Uh -huh. I just want to say my son walked up to me when we first walked up here, and he said, Mama, you're going to be healed tonight because I believe that you're going to be healed. Your son said that. Yes, he's been laying hands on me and my husband for months now. Your son has. Yes. I, not that we've asked him to, but he has just done that, being led by the Spirit, I Interesting. believe. Yeah. Okay, so this this kid's being led by the Spirit. Yeah, because you know my 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 seven eight year old my seven year old kid runs around laying hands on everybody and healing them and praying for it to be healed all the time at seven years old. 
Nobody's even asked this kid if he even understands what the gospel is. Nobody's even, I mean, this kid don't even know what the gospel is probably. But they take him to this WWE wrestling uh, spirit show here that's nothing but a game. Yes. So, so your condition is, would you say it was? Um, I've had a stomach bacteria for the last six months uh -huh. that I'm, I've been. I, <laughs> that's easy to prove. Well, hey, I got a stomach bacteria. Okay. I, I have a stomach bacteria. What? So you got like bad gas? I mean, what? I mean, you need a bowel cleanse? And this is going to come up here. And this guy? This very creepy dude in this weird suit is going to anoint you with some spirit. i healed of, I'm clear of, um, but it's just left a nice footprint inside the belly um, that's caused quite a bit of pain for quite a long time. So mm -hmm. my husband has not been able to stand for more than six minutes without being in great pain in his back. Six minutes? He's been standing here. Thank God we've been waiting because I've asked him for the last... Like... Six minutes, like like who picks that number out? Uh, six minutes he can't stand. Oh, you timed it? Like like you've timed it like every single time? You've t like you've timed six minutes every. It's just these people are so deceived, and it is so rotten. But people get mad at me because I just can I I I just lay it out straight, and people get angry with me about that. Because I won't jump on this, the, the, their their train of insanity with this topic that is not biblical. None of what they do is biblical. Last half hour, are you in pain? And he says, no, I Come am not in pain. Somebody. My husband has not had a restful night's sleep for the last 20 years. He suffers from insomnia and sleep apnea. And we have a laundry list of things tonight, but God spoke to me tonight and said, I have a bigger list for you. And so I don't know what that list is for us, but he is greater than my laundry list for my family. <laughs> Put your hands up. Come on, both of you, husband yes, and wife. Come on, you young man, you too. Hands up, baby. Yeah, Holy Ghost coming on all three of you. Yes. There's the power right there. It's all over all three of you. I don't know. Young man, I don't know. He asked if he was going to fall over. He's like, am I going to fall over? Watch. Oh, right there. It's all over, all three of you. I don't know. Young man, I don't know. I don't know that. I'm not in charge of that. But I tell you, the Holy Spirit's after this. He's arrested the three of you tonight as a unit. Mm. Daniel 5.5 5 says the handwriting was on the wall. And he's going to be revealing to you some things very clearly about your future, your direction, your pursuit of what you're to be doing. There's a change in the course for this family. Oh, my God. Yeah, because you're going to put some devils on them. That's why. change in the course for this family Amen. oh my god the change oh that's the power that's the power of the Holy Ghost oh dear Jesus oh dear Jesus somebody good for him man good for that kid man good for him he's like I didn't fall there's hope for that kid. I'm telling you that right now. There's hope for that kid. You look at that kid. He's like, eh, you ain't got nothing on me. Watch. Somebody. Somebody give God a big shout. Telling you what, there's some hope for that kid, man. Look at that. Somebody. Somebody give God a big shout! There you go. 
I thought that was kind of interesting, didn't you? That kid, kid looks at him like, you got nothing on me, man. His mojo didn't work on that kid, did it? Anyway, well, these people, that's what Pastor Hoggard said he did too when he went to one of those meetings one time. And he said they just tapped him on the forehead and he didn't fall. And then he they came back through again, tapped him on the forehead again, and he didn't fall. And he left there and said, God, I'll never tempt you like that again. Yep. So now we get into talking about the being slain in the spirit. And really deal with this topic. David Cloud has some good comments on this and some good scripture that he gathered together too on this as well, which and some other things that we'll we'll probably put together as we go here. Um, so we're going to get our Bibles out. All right. Spirit slaying, the practice of spirit slaying has been a part of the Pentecostal movement since its inception. It is also called falling under the power, carpet time, Holy Spirit glue, soaking in the anointing and other things. It was experienced at Parham's Bethel Bible School in Topeka, Kansas. So here's the history of this modern-day movement. Now, understand, this is the same movement of kundalini. This is the same thing as the kundalini spirit. It's the same thing as the as the New Age, the New Agers. Um, you know, there. this is the 33rd, uh, the 33rd uh, bone, you know, all the way, it follows it all the way up. Um, there's there's a serpent down in your belly. That, that The charismatics say you got to get the baby out. You got to get the baby out. You got to get the baby out. Right? Yeah, that's slain in the spirit. What does that mean? It means to murder you. Last time I checked, it doesn't sound like a good thing. But they teach it. They teach it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's all New Age mysticism. You're asking me a question on there, and I'll answer it for you. Just this once, I will. All right. Here it is. See this? Look at that. They want to awaken your third eye. They want to awaken the kundalini spirit in you. They want that serpent that's at the bottom of your belly down there, that's down at the bottom of the base of you right there. They want that to come up all the way up out of here, right? That's what they want. This is kundalini. That's what this is. That's the same thing the charismatics are doing. Uh, you can look up the Third Eye Institute. Same thing. That's that's the goal. That's what they want to do. That's what it's all about. It's spiritism. It's Satanism. It's Luciferianism. It's another spirit. And really what they want to do is awaken you up to a spirit world, open up your third eye and show you a spirit world. That's what they want to do. They say there's a tangled, there's a tangled uh, serpent down into your lower bowels, and they want that spirit to come up and out and awaken and give you light and all those other things. But is that taught by the scriptures? No, it's not taught by the scriptures. God never told us to do any of those things. Somebody asked me a question, does it really do anything? Yes, it does. Some people, when they're, when they're hitting the forehead like that and their pineal gland right there, some people have an electric shock that goes through them. 
and they do fall down. All right, Carl, let's try to keep it G-rated here. But this is, this is, you see these points? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? That's the spirit. Right. We're going to talk about that, that whole turning off your mind thing, okay? But I want you to understand, this is not new. When I did my message, man, I... Mm. I've got it somewhere. Go back if you could. I wish Luke was on here. If somebody, you could go back into my sermon audio page and look in the charismatic movement. Let me see if I can find it for you. Let's see. If I can find it for you. Let's see. It would be one of the oldest ones I ever did. Spirit of Antichrist. Slain in the Spirit, Antichrist. 2014. In that sermon, I talk about the Third Eye Institute. Okay? I talk about uh, that Kundalini spirit. I talk about all of those things. You, If you want to listen to that, you can listen to that. Um, about that, that'll give you a lot of the technical things. Right. It. Um, if you look at that, if you listen to that sermon, I'll have it all in there. OK, so we'll talk about it. It'll talk about that. That's a that's a radio show that I did on it. Um, Broadcast, whatever. We called it radio back then. Um, there should be another one that I did, too. But I don't know where it is anyway. But I talked about I talked about that. That one will be fine. Um, that one will be fine. You, you can listen to that one. So th that'll have in there, and it'll talk about all those things. Now, so back in the beginning of the charismatic movement, that's, that's what they did. That's what they've always done, the Pentecostal movement. They've, they're the slain in the spirit. But they're, it's the same spirit as Joseph Smith, as kundalini as in all those others they're trying to do the same thing they're trying to awaken something Ooh, that was two hours long all right anyway but that's their point that's their goal Many of the Isuzu testimonies describe that spirit slaying was experienced at Azusa Street. The first page of the first edition of Seymour's Apostolic Faith paper said, Some are slain under the power of God. The true believers eyewitness accounts of the revival that shook the world. Page 29. Many of the Azusa testimonies described this experience. William Durham said, A current of electricity was being turned on me from all sides, and for two hours I lay under his mighty power. Rachel Sizelove said, I was slain upon the floor. Spirit slaying was experienced under the ministry of Maria Woodworth Etter and Amy Semple McPherson. Why? Because they got devils, that's why. It was experienced in the Church of God prophecy from its inception. It was experienced in 1948 at the Sharon Orphanage in schools in northern North Battleford, Saskatchewan, and Kenneth Hagin's meetings and in John Wimber's Signs and Wonders conferences. It was experienced in Toronto Blessing in the Brownsville Revival. It is experienced under the ministry of Rodney Howard Brown, Kenneth Copeland, and Benny Hinn. It is a very common practice in charismatic circles. 
David Cloud said he witnessed spirit slang at the New Orleans 87 and Indianapolis 90 and St. Louis 2000. These influential conferences had combined attendance of about 65,000 people. He said he witnessed spirit slaying most recently at the conference at IHOP in 2014, the International House of Prayer. Bunch of devils. The following are examples in the New Testament people falling down. So now let's look at that. The Bible says that there, there are believers that fell down. But they fell down in worship to the Lord in Matthew chapter 2. Verse number 11, look at this. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What they do? They fell down and worshipped to him. They didn't fall back. Matthew chapter 18. Verse number 26. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all from the parable. Luke 17, 16. And fell down on his face at his feet and gave him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. That's right. They fell forward, Natalie. That's right. They did. Mm-hmm. They fell down before him, not away from him. Paul describes unbelievers who will fall down and worship God in the church in 1 Corinthians 14, 25. Once they get saved, in these instances, the term fall down is used to describe worship. See also Psalm 72, 11. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Amen. Um, Isaiah 44, 19. This is falling before him, right? Forty four nineteen. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, I also have baked it upon the coals thereof. I have roasted the flesh and eaten it, and I shall make a residue of their abomination. Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? Is he going to fall down to a stock of a tree? No, not the worshipers of God won't. The disciples fell down on their faces and were afraid when they heard the voice of God. In the transfiguration in Matthew 17, 6. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Right, they fell forward, not backward. But you know who fell backwards? John chapter 18, verse 6. These men fell backwards. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Jesus said, I am he, and they fell backward. The falling away. Right? I mean, think about it this way.
Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So what is all this falling away, this slain in the spirit? What is it all doing? What is it preparing? It's preparing that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What are they showing with this falling away? Isis, Horus, and Set? Horus and Set? The dying god Hiram Abiff that the Masonic Order does? Right? That falling down, that god, that, that, that falling down, and then that phoenix rising? What are they, what are they doing? What, what are they mimicking here? What are all these Pentecostals and all these Charismatics mimicking? The falling away. That's what they're mimicking. Ananias fell down dead when he was stricken of God in Acts 5, 5. When he lied to the Holy Ghost, what did he fall down? He fell down dead. That doesn't sound like a good thing, does it to you? No, I don't believe so. You know, so so why do all these Pentecostals believe that this that this falling away, right? Why do they believe that this falling away is of God? When it doesn't look godly, Satan falling from heaven, falling down from heaven. Mm-hmm. I saw lightning. As lightning. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's right, Lisa. They do want an experience. They want some kind of experience. Mm. And they're going to get one. Hey, by the way, everybody, if you could like the video, like, share it, subscribe it, put it on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, wherever. We got 73 people on. If you guys could hit the thumbs up button on there and and like the video, uh, that way you can push that algorithm, get it out there in front of everybody so people can see it and uh, it gets more exposure. Amen? All right. We want the truth out here of these topics and people need to hear them. How about Saul when he fell down to the ground when the Lord appeared to him on the road to Damascus? Now, that was a good thing, right? But he didn't fall away. He didn't fall back. He fell into the Lord's hands, didn't he? John fell at the glorified feet of Christ as dead in Revelation 1.17. He fell as if dead. Right? Think about that. So how are these examples different than the charismatics? Well, where do we see in the scriptures anywhere? Where do we see in the scriptures anywhere, friends? Where do we see... Where do we see anybody doing that? Where does we see anybody falling down in the Bible like these guys are? You got to ask yourself that question. Do I see that in the Bible? Do I see this in the Bible?
ourselves. Don't leave us to yes. our foolish thinking. Lord, we want all that you have, all, yes. all that you have. Yes. And Lord, if it blows our little minds, let them be blown. <laughs> Father, we want all of what you have, all of what you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does anybody remember a biblical account of anything like this? told me to look at him and I looked at him and he had a tie on and on I don't know if he's here tonight but he'll know on the tie had a wolf howling seriously did you hear what she said had a wolf howling on his tie at the moon and the Lord said to me will you howl for me I said don't ask me to do that Lord he said, if I ask you, will you do it? He said, if I can't ask you to do something in your own house. So don't try the spirits, whether they are of God, right? You're just slain in the spirit. The glory's on you. The power of God's on you. And you're going to howl like a wolf in the church house. How are you going to do it out there? So... I don't either. We know you don't understand it. You got devils. So, they are blaspheming the Holy Ghost, Jacob. That's exactly what they're doing. That's, that's what they do. They accuse us of blaspheming the Holy Ghost, but that's what they're doing. Because that's not biblical. In the New Testament, there was no laying on of hands preceding the falling. In fact, there was no human instrumentality whatsoever in any of the instances of falling in the Bible. So, let's examine this. First, in these cases, those that fell were unbelievers in John chapter 18, verse 6, and Acts chapter 9, verse 4. Second, in the New Testament, there was no laying on of hands preceding the falling. No one touched them and made them fall. Third, there was no sp Holy Ghost glue which kept someone from rising. That they're so slain in the spirit that they can't get up. Like this. Not that one. Like this one. <laughs> Let me have that chair. Woo! Watch this, because you're going to notice Kenneth Copeland's going to come sneak it in here with his devils. So just take a look at this, then you're going to see what's going on. Oh, oops, I'm sorry. Let me back it up. I did it again. <laughs>
It's ridiculous. Well, there you go. So where do we find any of that? Where do we find any of that in the New Testament? The answer is we don't. None of that, none of that is in the New Testament. It's, it's not, it's not in the Bible. It does sound like a bunch of cackling devils. That's right. So there's no Holy Spirit glue which kept somebody from rising in the scriptures. We don't see that anywhere. Fourth, there was no laughter associated with the falling. I want you to think about this. There's no laughter at all in the Bible in dealing with those things. That you're going to fall down in an hysterical, stupid fit of laughter. No, it's usually a very sober, if God's spirit is moving on you, it's a very sober and it's a very serious thing. But in this case, in this case, it's a joke is what it ends up being. Let me see if I found that. Let's see. There was another one I wanted to show you. Here it is right here. This one right here. We'll get to this one in a little while. Fifth. There was no atmosphere created to encourage falling. There was no teaching about falling. There were no people queuing up in lines waiting to fall. There were no repetitive choruses uh, preparing people for mystical experiences. There was no one yelling, fire, fire, more, Lord, fire, fire, more, Lord. There wasn't any of that. There wasn't anybody stoking up the crowd. Right? Right? 
There wasn't any of that. There wasn't anybody doing that in the New Testament. So then what is it? That anointing is of the devil. I believe they are anointed by the devil. I believe that they're anointed by the devil. That's what I believe. That's what it is. That's where it comes from. It's the deception, distraction techniques that Satan uses. And uh, I think it was Jelena said that somebody's practicing uh, Ignatius Loyola's spiritual exercises. Yep, because there's an element of it that is true. There's no doubt that some of those people do have a spirit on them. There's no doubt about it at all. There isn't a hint anywhere in the New Testament that the Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles and the early church has practiced spirit slaying. The Lord Jesus never fell down even though he had the spirit without measure. Think about that. Jesus had the spirit without measure. John the Baptist was full of the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Did John the Baptist ever act that way? There was no spirit uh, spirit slaying on the day of Pentecost. Be found in Christ. Ask the question, Pastor. Why do they why why do they hand it over to this and we don't? Because if you seek Christ, you'll find Him. If you seek experiences, you'll find those. If God's word is enough for you. If God's word is enough for you and you'll feast on God's word instead of experiences, then you'll never have to fear these things. These people don't know the gospel and they've never been born again. That's why. The members of the early churches never fell down after a charismatic fashion. Spirit, slay, spirit slaying is never mentioned in the New Testament epistles. Paul never described it. Peter never described it. And John never described it. They never described any of those things in the Bible. They weren't there. What they call holy laughter. This is what they call holy laughter. I want you to see this. This is Rodney Howard Brown. A heretic of the heretics. Ushers, we'll pick her up here quickly. I want to show you a person beside themselves. No, you, I'm going to give you an example of a person. Pick her up, bring her back here. She's not drunk as you suppose. The, the power of God hit her when she was two years and three months. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I did it again. Let me back it up. Sorry, guys. I'll get used to this. I got to remember to switch that. Beside themselves. No, you. I'm going to give you an example of a person. Pick her up. Bring her back here. She's not drunk as you suppose. (laughs) 
The, the power of God hit her when she was two years and three months. Right. The power of God hit her. That's the power of God? Power to do what? The power to do what? What? Of what use is that? This anointing hit her when she was two years and three months old. We'd come back from one of the meetings and we were looking after her. We, we have a walk-in closet. We put it, my wife put her in the closet because it's darker there and she could sleep and she was crying. And I said, to bring the baby. I put it. It's like one o'clock in the morning. I said, bring baby, put her here. She said, let her sleep. I said, oh, bring her here because she still had to get the, the paint off her face, you know. You know how it is, ladies. And so she brought... Taylor Buck put it there in the bed, and I started to read a Bible story to her. And then I began to talk to her about Jesus and, and coming to your heart. And, and then I said, and I prayed with her. She prayed just li- like a little, you know, little baby prayed to accept Jesus. And then I- at two years old, at two years, three months old. So he's saying at two years, three months old, this kid, this this young, this lady got saved. And I said, and he fills you with his Holy Spirit. And when I said that the power of God hit her, and she started to laugh uncontrollably, and she laughed for 12 minutes. My wife ran out of the bathroom. I was crying. She was crying. And we watched the little one. Little baby, let me tell you. And she said, pop-ups, it's so funny. It is so funny. Okay, so you're saying that you knew it was 12 minutes and it lasted 12 minutes. They always have these numbers. Lasted 12 minutes. A two-year-old baby. So my daughter Prudence is, my youngest daughter Prudence is 20 months old, around 20 months old, I think. Yeah, 20, 21 months old, something like that. And they are literally saying, they are literally, he's literally saying that this person could be saved, or this person was saved at two, two years old and started laughing in the Holy Ghost. And she's been like that ever since. I mean, if there's any anointing, she'll get it. If you don't get it, she'll get your drink. If you don't take the drink, she will get your drink. I ain't ever put it down. She'll get your drink if you don't want it. Somebody said, you mean, you mean beside yourself today? It's all up to you. It's not up to God. Somebody said, on a Sunday morning, you can get this on a Sunday morning. Well, when do you want it? Tonight? Tomorrow night? Wednesday night? I mean, there comes a time when you just say, okay, you know, I'm going to yield to the Holy Ghost. I'm going to let God come and touch me and do work on the inside of me. You can try to work this out with your head. You can't get it with your head. It's got nothing to do with your head. It's got to do with your heart. So bypass your head and your intellect and don't think about what you're doing and go right to your heart. No, he said she was two years old. She was a baby sleeping in the closet, two years old. Heads are for thinking, but hearts are for drinking. When you tell the Lord, come, fill me, touch me. I need a drink. I need a drink from heaven. I need a drink of the new wine. You can get it now. We don't wait till the end of the service. You can get it right now. It's not going to bother me. You're not interrupting me. You're not interrupting me. The Holy Ghost is causing the interruption. You're not interrupting me. What do you think happened on the day of Pentecost? What do you think happened? Verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost is fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house 
where they were sitting and they pitted them cloven tongues like as of fire and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all amazed and went out saying one another, what mean of this? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words. These are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass in the last days. Saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How could that see? But this is what happens when you don't use your brain and you go off of feelings alone. This is why our, our feelings can can talk us out of a lot of things, talk us into a lot of things, and get us in trouble. That's what happens when we use feelings and we don't use intellect. God is going to shake the United Nations. He's going to shake the United Nations. But in order for God to do that, he first has to shake you. And then when he shakes you, he sends you. And when he sends you, everywhere you go, get shaken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't let the devil lie to you and tell you this is a one-time occurrence. Don't let the enemy lie to you. As their religious leaders lying to the people, telling them that the book of Acts 2 only happened once. It did not. It didn't only happen in Acts 2. It happened again over the chapters. But in Acts 10, it happened again because Peter was there in Acts 2. He was there in Acts 10. And in Acts 11, when he went to Jerusalem, he said, as I was speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on them as it did on us at the beginning. Peter was there at the beginning. He was there in Acts 2. Well, duh, he was a Jew. It was supposed to happen. It was a sign to the Jews. It was a sign to them. At different times with Cornelius, it was a sign to the Jews that Gentiles and Jews could be in one body. They had to see a, a miracle. They had to see a sign of that to know that that was God's work or God's hand, that those Goya, those Gentile dogs, could be saved by the grace of God and have the Holy Ghost just like they did. And that was the reason for it. There was no other reason for it. He was there in Acts 10. The Holy Ghost was there in Acts 2. The Holy Ghost was there in Acts 10. The Holy Ghost is here. Right now. In this place. No. Well, you know what, though? Here's the thing. I want you to think about this, because here's what makes people mad. When you deal with things like this, when you talk about things like this, when you preach on things like this, and you reveal these things, people get upset with you, and when you question Kanye and you question all these other things, they get mad. Why? They don't want you uh, being judgmental. They don't want you questioning any of these things. They don't want you doing that. You're just supposed to accept everything that happens. You're not supposed just think with your heart and not with your head. Right? Don't use your head. No, we're not crazy. We're not crazy at all.
as I stand here right now, I'm, a total, I'm in total peace. Total peace, total peace. I can lie down and go to sleep. Right now, I'm in total peace, total rest. Some of you don't look at No, I'm just trying to convey something to you. Everything you need is in the Holy Ghost. Everything. Yes, first in Jesus, get saved, but then get filled and stay filled. Filled on a Monday, filled on a Tuesday, filled on a Wednesday, filled on a Thursday, filled on a Friday, filled on a Saturday, filled on a Sunday. You shouldn't come in here with your tank running low. Think, think about this here, though. Uh, think about this. These people are going there to be filled. And nobody is talking about the gospel. Nobody is talking about a purpose of filling. Nobody is talking about the work of the Holy Spirit actually in sanctification and separation in living a holy life. Nobody's preaching against sin. Nobody's preaching against wickedness. Nobody's preaching against the works of the flesh. Nobody's preaching how to walk in the Spirit. It's all experiences. Ephesians 5 and verse 18 in the Amplified. Classic. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. Somebody say, what's debauchery? Google it. It's not good. <laughs> but be ever filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. In the literal Greek, it actually says, but be ye being, but be ye being filled, be ye being. We apologize for the dean of our Bible schools and, and the principal of the Bible school acting this way. It's the height of academia right here. And these constitutional attorneys, please forgive me. I should never have let them come sit on the front row. And as for my granddaughter, what can I say? Give me the new one. This is the new grandbaby. Just give it to me. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost be upon this little one. Raise her up to be a mighty woman of God. We've got to put our children, get them under the anointing. We've got to get Ugh. Get them under the anointing. Okay, so let's finish up here with uh, spirit drunkenness, which is similar to this. But when we get to it, we're going to get to the drunken delusion of Heidi Baker. The phenomenon of spirit drunkenness. Oh, by the way, let me back up and say this. Let me finish with this. Um, David Cloud says he refuses to participate in or support any alleged revival that includes spirit slaying or any other manifestations that is so patiently 
or patently, excuse me, contrary to what we see in the New Testament scriptures. Charismatic leaders say, don't worry about the manifestations. That is unscriptural and extremely dangerous advice. We are instructed to prove all things. Charismatic leaders say, just open up and don't be so uptight. Lighten up and let God do what he pleases. We want God to be in absolute control of our lives and churches, but it is folly and rebellion to ignore the fact that God's word warns repeatedly of false spirits and false teachers. The apostle Peter did not counsel us to open up and lighten up. Instead, he warned, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. To be vigilant is to be alert, on guard, on the outlook for enemies and deception. This is the very opposite of spirit-slaying experience, whereby the Christian allegedly goes out under the power. Now, spirit drunkenness, the phenomenon of spiritual drunkenness has been experienced from time to time throughout the history of the Pentecostal movement. It has become a prominent experience in recent Pentecostal charismatic revivals. There were cases of spiritual drunkenness in Amy Simple McPherson's early meetings. This phenomenon was frequently manifested in Kenneth Hagin's meetings, which you just saw. Especially in the 1990s, at a conference in Chesterfield, Missouri, Hagen staggered around like a drunk, sticking his tongue out and wiggling it like a serpent. He hissed and panted, blowing on people, waving his arms at them, striking them on the head while entire rows of people fell down or slid out of their seats in a drunken stupor as he lurched by. Spiritual drunkenness appeared in May of 1993 at Carpenter's Home Church in, in Lake, Lakeland, Florida, where Pentecostal evangelist Rodney Howard Brown called himself the Holy Ghost bartender, and people laughed hysterically and uncontrollably and staggered around like drunks. You just saw that. Spiritual drunkenness appeared in June 1993 at the Brownsville Assembly of God in Pensacola, Florida, where Pastor John Kilpatrick lay in a drunken stupor on the church platform for four hours and was so drunk in the spirit as at other times as the revival, quote, progressed that he had to be carried out of the church in a wheelbarrow. And then when he returned to operate his car, he ran into things when he tried to operate his car. What's the Bible say about drunkenness? Every time drunkenness is mentioned in the Bible, it is condemned. Oftentimes, the prophet's drunkenness is used to describe God's judgment upon the wicked. Isaiah chapter 19. We'll go there, Isaiah chapter 19. Let's see, verse number 14. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Isn't that what they look like? Isn't that what, isn't that what they look like? Isaiah 29, 19. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among shall rejoice. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Let me see here. That's a good verse, but... Oh, 9, sorry. Stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. Isn't that what they are? They stagger, but not with strong drink. What are they doing? Isaiah 
Isaiah 51, 17. It's a judgment of God is what they're doing. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. Jeremiah 13, 13. Then shalt thou say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings that sit upon David's throne, and the priests, and the prophets, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. I will dash them one against another. God doesn't like drunkenness. Jeremiah 25, 27. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. That doesn't sound good, does it? How about uh, 4826? It's a judgment. Make ye him drunken, for he magnified himself against the Lord. Moab also shall wallow in his vomit, and he shall also be in derision. Ezekiel 23. Actually, let's go to Jeremiah 51.7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand and made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. They are mad. You look at those people. Do you know what mad means, right? Mad does not mean angry. He brought... Taylor Buck put it there in the bed, and I started to read a Bible story to her. And then I began to talk to her about Jesus and, and coming to your heart. And, and then I said, and I prayed with her. She prayed just like a little, you know, little baby prayed to accept Jesus. And then I said, and he fills you with his Holy Spirit. And when I said that the power of God hit her, and she started to laugh uncontrollably, and she laughed for 12 minutes. My wife ran out of the bathroom. I was crying. She was crying. And we watched the little one. Little baby, let me tell you. And she said, pop-ups, it's so funny. It is so funny. Who thinks it's funny when God's spirit moves? I don't see that emotion as funny when God's spirit moves. The, the power of God hit her when she was two years and three months. As I stand here right now, It's not good. <laughs> See? They, they act mad. Why? Because God's given them their own delusion. Here, you want to drink that? I'll give you a cup. What did he say? What did Rodney Howard Brown, what did he say? He said, if you don't take your drink, somebody else will. Babylon, what is that? That spirit is mystery Babylon. That's the spirit they're drunk with. Do you get it? Babylon has been, has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. That's what they're drunk with. Listen to this. The only case in the entire Bible of a man of God describing himself spiritually drunken is Jeremiah 23, 9. Listen. Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. 
Jeremiah wasn't saying he was staggering about like a drunk. He was saying that he was amazed and overwhelmed in the face of the judgment of God, which he was professing, which he was prophesying over. It's nothing like what we see Rodney Howard Brown meeting today. It was sober and serious. Not hysterical laughter. There is no instance in the New Testament of the Lord Jesus Christ or the apostles or early Christians staggering about in a drunken stupor, laughing and acting foolishly, unable to attend duties, unable to preach, unable to even stand up. I'll show you what I'm talking about. First of all, we know what spirit. First of all, we know what spirit she has. Heidi Baker, female preacher. She's Jezebel, and she's got Mystery Babylon. Whoa. <laughs> now, let me, this is like, she's supposed to be preaching right now. Do you understand that? So you already know she's in rebellion. She has the spirit of a Jezebel harlot whore. A, uh, one of Satan's sluts. They are Satan's sluts. That's what they are. Uh, wow. Oh. Okay. Shaba, shaba, shaba. Uh. <laughs> okay. Wow. Some, well, some of you have only seen me here and you think this is how I always am. It is, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Why would anybody want to walk around like that? That is a sermon title, Satan's Sluts. Jezebel, women preachers. Satan's Sluts. Coined a new title. Right here live on OPVC. <laughs> anyway, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If this is how she is all the time, or wants to be all the time, if she wants to be this way all the time, No, there's nobody receiving any demon. There's that's not the video. That's not the same video. I just want to know right now. Bend Oregon Street Preacher, are you saying that this right here is biblical? Answer the question right now. Are you saying that this right here is biblical? Give me an answer quickly. Is this biblical? I'll wait. I'll wait. Because what your comment on there is, is telling me that you sympathize with these satanic sluts. And if you do, hit the bricks, bud. Hit the bricks. You're gone. And you could say, I'm not nice like everybody else wants to say, and I'm this mean guy, but I get what spirit that is. I get what spirit this is, and I'm just making sure that we're on the same page here. That's all. Because this is satanic. And if you're telling me that you manifest like this and you support people who manifest like that, uh-uh. You got another spirit, and you got another gospel, and you got that mystery satanic slut spirit. And I don't want it around me at all. I don't want it anywhere near me. Mm-mm. Carol said I didn't have to get it together, so. <laughs> Whoa. OK. 
Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay, first of all, I question I question any man's manhood that sits under a female preacher. I already think they've been neutered or they're a eunuch or they've been or or they and they have no testosterone and they have no manhood. Already think that. Like out the gate, let's get that settled right now. You have absolutely no manhood if you have a, if if you have a female pastor. You have no manhood at all if you have a female pastor. If you sit under a female preacher, you have lost your manhood completely. And your wife probably tells you what to do and yells at you a lot. Secondly, if you could sit in a room with this while this is going on, you probably have devils. so nice you just let people get toasted right in church it's like huh? you're so nice you just let people get toasted right in church how many devils does this lady have in her i have to get it together so often and you don't even care it's like <laughs> some of you in the background probably do but I'm just gonna talk from here. I haven't done this in years. Oh God. Anyway, Shaba. I was considering, um, whoa, when I came here, just close your eyes if you're worried, please. Oh, I, whoa, I came here about, uh, whoo, 11 years ago and um, I was gonna go work at Kmart, whoa with my um, <laughs> theological training. I was like, <laughs> I was so tired. And then, whoo, about two weeks ago, I graduated and I decided I'd go to work at Nordstrom's. <laughs> it's true. <sighs> I thought maybe I could cut my, you know, Maybe I could, maybe I could, whoa, maybe I could comb my hair. I said I had no qualifications, so I don't know who else would hire me. <laughs> oh, here we go, Shaba. <laughs> It's just so overrated. So so no one ever took a Bible and thought, where is this at in the Word of God? Where, you know, like, where is this in the Bible? Like, nobody's asking this. They're just watching this lady do this and saying, like, well, what prophet ever did this?
I haven't been this undone in years. Wow. Um, speaking of undone, let me show you something. Um, they're talking about the power of God, right? Well, that little satanic slut right there, that little one right there, wasn't close to God, but this man was, and listen to how, how he acted. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of an unclean people, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs and brought the offering. He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. No, I, I have no problem, uh, Bend Oregon Street Preacher, with, with you. I, I thought you were supporting that, and I, I've i had people sneak in, do that, and then start a big argument, and I'm just not going to go through it. I'm not, I'm not going to deal with it. So I, I this spirit is so wicked, I don't want it anywhere near me. I, I don't, I don't, it's, just, it's just it's wicked, and I don't want people supporting it. But when he got closer to God, what happened? What happened when he got closer to God? It humbled him. <sighs> I just feel like, you know, you're just there and you're like watching this crazy woman. Well, they are watching a crazy woman. They're watching, well, not a crazy woman, a mad woman. Mad woman. A mad woman. <laughs> All right. All right. Saying, whoa, you should. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're blaming God for this, like, like God did this to you. this and I'm like why don't they get someone else to stop them or something and they just don't that's why God keeps showing up here yeah yeah this is God showing up so God showing up is making you act like an idiot yeah I know I heard her use the Lord's name in vain I heard her say that so God showing up here is making you act that way how is that church edified in the scriptures according to the biblical definition of edification? How are they edified by this? It's because they don't, even no matter what it looks like. I mean, this looks weird. If it was me watching, I'd be like, that's weird. <laughs> It is me. I'm in it. I'm, whoa, it's happening to me. And it's weird. <laughs> I'm, whoa, I think I'll explain. Maybe not. I don't know. I just had the, I've been, uh, whoa, I've been preaching for uh, how many years? <sighs> 30 something. <sighs> A long time. Oh, without a furlough. Oh. And uh, I, uh, whoo. And so for God to just toast me is actually, whoo. <laughs>
else. <laughs> uh, anything like it. It's all grace. <laughs> yeah, that's the grace of because God. Because I earned it. <laughs> Listen oh, to what she says here. You're just... I'm going to preach. Whoa. And I'm going to preach from my life because... Of so not from the word of God. Listen to what she says. She's going to preach from her life. Listen. I'm going to preach. Whoa. And I'm going to preach from my life because, um, whoa, because I earned it. <laughs> she's going to, she's going to preach from her life because she earned it. She said, okay, help me. God, he is. That's the deal. I can't believe it. How, how is God helping you? when you're acting that way. Let me ask you a question. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Does that look sound to you? Does that look like a sound mind? It is painful but, to oh, watch. Oh, gee, he's worried if my university sees it, they'll take away all that work. I don't even think people walked out of here. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be alive. Oh, okay. Whoa, I think I got something. Whoa, thank you. You're so nice. And you, you just, you just, by grace. And it's guaranteed. Oh, wow. Do anything. Um, cause I've like thrown everything in for ministry and for God and, and and I will see 700 mosques. Oh, yeah, listen to this. Will come a harvest. Now she, now she looks like she's possessed fully by a devil. Look at her face. Loves to drink Holy Spirit. And whoa. I know Soki. I pray all day long. will come a harvest, a huge harvest of glory and grace and power and kingdom. And I will see 700 mosques become Jesus, places of Jesus worship, Jesus mosque. Show. Show. For the cars that were totaled four in two days. Ha 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 ha. I claim a fleet. And I think God actually tolerated it. After 27 years of preaching the gospel on the mission field. I think God actually tolerated it. And I said it last night. It's like... As no yet. <laughs> oh. Anyway, that lady has got devils in her like you wouldn't believe. So the point is that, oh, let me finish that. What they're teaching, this spiritual drunkenness. It's not of the Bible. It's not in the Word of God. Those who support spirit, spiritual drunkenness quote Acts chapter 2 in an attempt to prove that the apostles were drunk in the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. But this is nonsense. Those who said the disciples were full of new wine were mockers. They did not say the disciples were drunk because they were staggering around and slurred in speech and falling to the ground because it is obvious they were doing none of those things. Peter was able to speak clearly and to preach a powerful message. The mockers said the disciples were drunk because of the many languages that were used to preach the wonderful works of God that day and because they wanted to slander the servants of Christ. In his reply to these mockers, Peter plainly said, For these are not drunken as ye suppose.
Further, in Ephesians 5.18, Paul contrasts drunkenness with the filling of the Spirit. The drunkard is not in control of himself, but is under the power of a foreign substance, whereas the Spirit-filled Christian is entirely in control of himself under the direction of the Holy Spirit. This interpretation is confirmed by the context, which commands duties requiring great soberness of mind and heart. For example, the one who is filled with the Holy Spirit, according to the context of Ephesians 5, is one who walks circumspectly, meaning very carefully. That is the opposite of being drunken in the Spirit. They're walking soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's what God said. So remember that. That this, this, what they are teaching is antichrist. What the Word of God says is how we define the terms by the Bible, not by the what they use. For instance, they say forbid not to speak in tongues. Well, we don't forbid we don't forbid biblical tongues. If you could speak another language like the 18 languages at Pentecost that were spoken, we wouldn't forbid you to do that. Why would we? But what we will do is forbid your unbiblical tongues and your babbling and your false spirits and your and your satanic teachings. That's what we would we would um That's what, we, that's what we would accept, but we would not accept those that are slain in the Spirit, those that are drunken in the Spirit, and those that are speaking babbling and not biblical lang- not languages as found in the Scriptures. So God's Word. Not, if somebody just says, well, I have the gift of tongues, okay, what language do you speak? But they don't. They babble. That's what they do. So anyway, a lot to think about. Okay, well, I'm about out of here. It is almost 4 o'clock. I'm about two hours in, and uh, we're about done here. Um, We'll be at church tonight here in about three hours, and then get up in the morning and we're off. So we'll be gone for about 10 days. And um, so you pray for us as we're on the road. I'm looking forward to being away with my family and spending some time with them and uh, looking forward to getting some rest and kind of not focusing on anything, uh, you know, just doing my normal Bible devotions and things of that nature, but kind of taking a break from everything else. So... We'll definitely miss all of you. I'm so used to doing things every day that it's hard for me not to. But it it'll take me some time to get my mind to be like, okay, I gotta I gotta focus on something else. For a while, focus on my own family and uh and have a good time. I'm gonna try to just be a kid fun with my kids and run around with them and play and have a good time with them. You know, uh, that's, that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on that and, uh, try to have fun. Um, let's see. So I'm going to go over to North Carolina, I think, and we're going to go to that Biltmore house or whatever you call it. So I'll be in that area, and we'll be 
in the Smoky Mountains most of the time. So we'll be looking forward to that. And the kids are excited about that. And uh, Grandma and Grandpa are coming with. They're pretty excited, too. And we're going to be going to the Creation Museum in the Ark this weekend. We'll be going there. And then we'll be heading to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee at the end of the week. So it'll be there for about four or five days. So looking forward to that. Um, I think that Kanye is antichrist, and I think he's playing a big game on people. I think he got a number one album by being another number one album by pretending to be a Christian. That's what I think. So I think it was to sell records and to sell um, sweaters and 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 to prove that he could break into another another um, genre. And it's also a spiritual thing with him. I mean, before. He made his profession. He had a plan to start a church back in 2017. He said he was going to start a church. He also said that he was greater than the Apostle Paul. I don't know what Wolf Lodge is. Anyway. That's what I think, Rebecca, about it. And I think it's dangerous. And I think people are falling for it. And I think it's going to be bad. That's what I think. $240 for a Kanye sweater. A Jesus is King sweater. So... Yep. No, I don't know where that is, actually. I've never heard of it. But anyway, so um, you all take care of yourselves and and uh, be careful out there. Um, and pray for one another. Don't forget to pray for us just because I won't be just because I won't be online. Well, I believe CCM music is from the pit of hell. So and his music is rap and Christian rap is there's no such thing as Christian rap. So I have a problem with the genre of music already. Um. And anyway, so, but maybe when I get back, I'll talk about CCM, rap music, and all those other things to show you why I'm against all that. But anyway. Anyway, uh, so pray for us. Don't forget to pray for us, even though we're not on live three times a week here for the next two weeks almost. Don't forget to pray for us. Uh, keep us in your prayers and and um, what day am I going to be in North Carolina? I ought to be towards the end of the week next week, like Thursday maybe, something like that. Thursday or Friday. So Thursday. It, it can't be any later than Thursday because i got to be back in Chicago area on Friday. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. And uh, thank you, Andrea, as well. Um, yep, that's right. That's how they summon the gods. That's correct. That's correct. It's all, it's all a part of the plan there. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So anyway, have a good night, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. We'll have some sermons that are go online. Um, there's some back ones that may not be on there yet. So maybe we'll get those. I can have Luke get those on there for you. So we'll see what we can do. Anyway, have a good night.